Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at free options for disc cloning. If maybe you've bought yourself a nice new shiny NVMe drive, or perhaps you're trying to swap out maybe an older two and a half inch drive and you're doing some upgrades and you want to clone your hard drive or migrate your hard drive from one disc to another. There used to be a go-to option, which was known as the Macrium Reflect, the free edition, which was absolutely great and a lot of us used it, but sadly they have actually taken that away now, so that is only a paid option. So actually I was looking around for some various pieces of software to see what would be a good replacement for that, because it's not something that I do on a tremendously regular basis, but it's one of those handy tools to have in your arsenal. And possibly you may even want to keep it on your system to do things like incremental backups, all that kind of stuff, which a lot of these software packages do. So I have been looking around to see what is available, and one which has actually stood out in front of all the others at the moment seems to be a program called Disk Genius. Now this is not a sponsored or an affiliated video in any way shape or form. It is a free piece of software although there are paid for tiers of which if you want to apply for those or pay for those that is entirely down to you. I don't get any commission or anything like that from you doing so so that is completely up to you. But I wanted to take a look, see what it's like, do an installation, do a data transfer and actually see what it's like and then come back at the end of the video to see if it's something I can recommend to our viewers. So with that out of the way let's get on and give it a go. Okay, so before we get started, just going to quickly go through what we're actually doing here so it makes it clear in your minds what is actually happening. So currently in the machine, there is our two terabyte drive, which is nestled up in there, which you'll probably get in a close up of shortly. And what we've got is our one terabyte drive. So what we're trying to do is free up some space. Now the drive isn't using all the capacity, it's using less than a tenth of it. So this is going to be absolutely great. So we can take the two terabyte drive out and use that for a game drive on another PC. So I'm going to put this into another M.2 slot on the computer. Now most modern PCs will have multiple M.2 slots. If you haven't, you can always use something such as this, which is the Oracle M.2 SSD enclosure. You can get other types of USB drive enclosures, all that kind of stuff. Choice is entirely up to you. And obviously if you're using SATA drives, the same applies. You've probably got more than one or two SATA ports on your motherboard. So just use whichever suits you. You can, of course, if you want to kind of do cross platform. So maybe you've got a SATA drive in your PC and you want to upgrade to NVMe. The same thing applies throughout. Just make sure that both drives are actually connected to the system before you start using the software. So I'm going to quickly put this into the machine, which is very straightforward to do. And then we can start the machine up and get the cloning process started. Okay, so the next part of it is to actually get Disk Genius. So this is the website, discgenius.com forward slash download, or you can go to discgenius.com forward slash free. Links will be in the video description, as always. Options here, Disk Genius free, standard, and professional. We're obviously going to use free. And you can download, just click on free download. And you'll get a pop-up very shortly after the system scan file. And ask you where you want to save it. We're just going to save this to our Windows desktop. So now we can minimize that. It's a very small file, actually, only uh, 64, well, 61.4 megabytes. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit bigger than that when it's actually installed, but yeah, it's a, quite a small footprint there. So let's get this installation started. So double click, and you'll have your user account control, and then you can choose your language of which there's English or not English. And then you can read through the terms and conditions should you wish to or you can just choose accept. Now there is a warning here. Take care, please do not install this application on the partition where you want to recover files because this does also file recovery as well or data recovery. So obviously yeah, you don't want to install data recovery software on the drive that you're actually trying to recover data from, but for cloning and all that kind of stuff and backups, it's absolutely fine. So click on next. And now we have the option to launch the program or go back to the website or do both. Uh, we just want to launch Disk Genius. So we'll click on Finish. And this is the main window. So it's listing your drives there. So the main drive there is our Fiaxiang 2 terabyte NVMe. So 2 terabyte, 1 terabyte, and there's our drives. The new drive, the Solidigium, hasn't been formatted. It is a completely clean and new disk. So that is why it's not showing any partitions or anything. So it's, uh, you don't need to do anything to your drives, literally just throw them in the computer. As long as they're recognized in the BIOS, it's going to be absolutely fine. So the options are you can do this in two ways. So you can go through tools and you can choose for system migration. 
or you can choose clone disk. The choice is yours really, both kind of do the same thing. Clone disk gives you a little bit more control. So let's take a quick look at system migration. So if you do that, it immediately says to select your target disk. So this is the disk that you're going to, because it knows what you want to do. It knows that you want to copy your Windows installation. So this is great if you've just got a single main C drive, no other partitions on it whatsoever, then that's a good way of doing it. It will do other partitions, but this is basically just saying, right, I know the operating system disk, I'm going to transfer that onto our new target disk. So you can do that and you can choose OK. I'm going to cancel that and actually do it the other way. So I'm going to do tools and I'm going to do clone disk. You can also do clone partitions. So if you just want to do a partition, you can do lots of options here. But if we go into source disk, so there is our source disk. So we can choose that as the source. It says, if you want to migrate the current system to target disk and make the target disk bootable, it is recommended to use system migration function. Do you want to use system migration right now? So there you go. There's a little bit of a warning. So if you want to make it bootable and you want it to basically just work, then system migration might be the easier way. So we're going to flip back to system migration. So again, choose our target disk. Again, it already knows which is the main disk because the operating system is running on it. It's showing us to select the target disk, which is our MT one terabyte drive. And it says there the disk ID, Solidigium, etc., etc. So I will choose OK. I'll actually highlight it first, then OK. And then it tells you that you can choose the uh, partition size, etc. So if you want to, you can resize partitions. You can slide these down. So if you want to make a smaller partition, you can do all that kind of cool stuff which might be handy. So if you want just a, a very small Windows drive and then you want to actually turn this into like a D drive or a games drive, something along those lines, you can certainly do all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And also you do have the options here at the bottom. So when finished to change the computer boot sequence. So you can actually allow it to go into the BOSS and choose which drive to boot from. Now in our particular instance, I'm actually going to remove the C drive the initial two terabyte one, and I'm going to swap their physical locations. So I don't need to do that because I'm going to do it myself manually. But if you're perhaps leaving the drives in place, then you may want to do that. So it is certainly an option. Also, you've got the option there to uh, prevent the system from sleeping during execution. So if you've got a lot of data and it's going to take a long time, you don't want your system from going into sleep. So it will prevent it from doing that. But essentially, that is it. So we know our source disk is our main C drive. You can see it's a C and our target drive is going to be, the, it's going to be local disk and it's going to call it C after and make it bootable. So we can click on start and it will say there, warning all files and partitions on the target disk will be overwritten. Are you sure you want to migrate the system to your Solidigium drive? Uh, yes, we are. So we'll click OK. And now we get the options. So you can choose now to actually do a hot migration. So that is doing it actually within the Windows environment as it is now. Or you can choose to install the Windows PE module and get it to do it in a Windows PE environment, which is basically outside of Windows. The choice is going to be down to the individual. I would suggest if you're doing hot migration, obviously don't try to use your computer other than what it's doing at the time. So just idling along, close down any applications which are unnecessary, etc., etc. Or you can just do the Windows PE module, which will essentially close down all of the tasks anyway and boot into another type of operating system. So I'm going to choose hot migration for this instance. And you can see there it's creating a snapshot and now you'll just see the files going across. Now this should be particularly quick because we're going from a PCI Express Gen 4 to a PCI Express Gen 4. So yeah, you can see the data is absolutely flying across there. So it shouldn't take very long. It's only a very small operating system, basic install OBS and a few other things on there. So there isn't a great deal of information there. Obviously, if you have more things installed on your drive, then the longer it's going to take. And obviously, if you've got a slower system, slower drives, etc., etc., all those things will have a bearing on how long this process will actually take. But it looks like this is probably going to take just around about a minute. So we'll uh, let that carry on and we'll come back when it's finished, although it is almost finished anyway. And there we go. That has uh, completely finished and took just over one minute. Absolutely fantastic speed there. So we've got the option here. So it says system migration is completed. To boot from the target system, please reboot to BOSS and set the target disk as boot device. 
do you want to restart your computer now? So no, I don't want to do that now. And that is essentially it. So we can choose complete because we are complete. Close all these windows down. And now I can turn off my OBS recording, turn off the computer, physically swap the two drives around and we're pretty much done. So I'm gonna do that now. So that was pretty painless and I'm very impressed the system is working. You can see behind me, it is actually turned on and it worked first time. All I've done is taken a two terabyte drive, which was in the machine, cloned it onto this one terabyte drive because we want a smaller drive because we're not using the full capacity. And now we've got ourselves a spare two terabyte drive, which all the data is on. So if you want to, you could use this for basically creating backups if you want to. The choice is entirely up to you. If you want to use something like this, the Arco M.2 SSD enclosure, you can have your drives in these and just do incremental backups should you wish to. Essentially, the software is pretty powerful. I like the migration thing. That worked really well. To be fair, I didn't have a great deal of information actually on the drive, but if you are someone who is uh, basically working for a living and time is money, I think this is well worth it. And the fact that it's a free piece of software as well and appears to work exceptionally well, it certainly gets my thumb and seal of approval. If you want to see more stuff about Disk Genius and other things it can do, let us know in that comment section below. But for now, I think that is going to wrap things up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.